And it's like, she's already trying to pivot and get us used to, like demonize everything about Bitcoin, but go, but blockchain and a government backed shitcoin. Now that's, that's the good stuff. And you go, and the problem is it like people will buy this bollocks. Boom, back once again, the world's most bullish podcast, The Four Bs, brought to you by none other than Mr. Orlin, a.k.a. The Trillion Dollar Man, Dr. Evil 10%, a.k.a. The People's Champ, myself, Sir Nevelock, a.k.a. The Excellence of Execution, and surprise, surprise, no surprise, our ESG candidate of the year, Mrs. No Show, a.k.a. Mrs. No Show. Is it not the... Uh, no show <laughs> <laughs> the combination of shim no we need a vagina on the podcast it can't she can't they can't be non-binary yeah yeah <laughs> but isn't non-binary in vogue it is but we also so have vaginas <laughs> if it's on trend, Mrs. No Show will be able to cater to that trend. If it's um, BLM, Ukraine, maybe even free Trump, <laughs> you know, it's going to be Mrs. No Show. I've heard Mrs. No Show has solar panels on her car. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and vegan uh, meats as well. Yeah, and only oat milk. Whilst eating avocados. <laughs> as, long as, as long as they're ethically harvest. <laughs> All right, should we actually get on the agenda? <laughs> Let's get into it. I suppose. It. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the a new story brought to you by Elizabeth Warren, who is advertising Bitcoin whilst not advertising Bitcoin, but advertising Bitcoin. And I guess it's one of those things that will eventually become a meme later on down the line once everybody gets it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just an interesting take on her take of the fact that it's it's a belief system. Hmm. Funny that. It's kind of like how money's been working for the last 5,000, 10,000 years, right? Yeah, but when pushed, it's... But the US dollar is backed by the government, you know, and and, and banks. And you can see she's going, oh, don't say banks right now. They keep going under. And she goes, so if there's a run on this, then stuff backs it. And you just go, go on, Elizabeth, say say the words. You print more money, don't you? When all the money gets lost <laughs> and there's no money in the bank, you print more, don't you? That's what you do. So by <laughs> backed, you mean there's an infinite supply. So no matter <laughs> how much we lose, we can just keep printing it. Whereas for Bitcoin, if you lose that, that is scarcity. They can't print any more. And you go, so hold on. You're just selling me on Bitcoin here. <laughs> this, is, this is an advertisement for Bitcoin. For her exact wording, she said, if there is a run on it the government promises there is something to back it up so there's no specific specifics about what backs it up what backs yeah. it up um is it I don't know. she said she mumbles around and goes banks yeah so like you said they just that print it. It? what's a bank it's here? like okay so what i think it's also talking about a run on banks how can a run on banks happen and it's yeah. when the currency doesn't actually exist when banks have got fractional reserves so yeah. I think in Europe it's like twenty percent or ten percent, whereas in America it's zero yeah. percent. So what's the, what's, the, what's the regulated amount they have to have? It's not the actual mm. amount of reserve they have. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. So, say we've got a five percent reserve in the U- U.S. and twenty percent of their depositors leave, that would create the run on banks. But you kind of go, is it the fact that they're leaving, which the issue it's not, is it? It's the fact that the banks are creating money out of thin air, lending money which they do not have. And somehow that's okay. And I think this is, you know, where 
you'd hope we don't end up with a financial system like fiat with Bitcoin, where people start making up pretend Bitcoin. But we well, will have to have gold, keys. It? Well, it's we cover this. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got your, you have to have it's your gold. Full. But if you have your gold, then you're not guaranteed that it is gold. Do you mean like an IOU Bitcoin? Yeah, so the, I don't know if we covered it on the pod or whether it's just a story which we circulated in our group about paper Bitcoin. So Mr. Orlin quite liked it because it'd be a way of having offline Bitcoin by having, I think it's some kind of stamped serial number. Um, so I think it would be, mm. you, yeah, you work with one company who probably has, you know, a thousand Bitcoin. You go, I want some paper Bitcoin. Therefore, you can pull some off them for a slight fee um, and giving them a proportion of your Bitcoin. So you end up with notes and they're responsible for those notes. Um what you know that those notes line up to their reserves but the you know my kind of worry about that is that leads us down into a system where we end up with ious which then disappear from me being ious and just being backed by government again you know it happened with gold i, I we don't want to be in that system there's got to be something better than having ious yeah well that, that's the thing because when people talk about paper bitcoin really what they're, they're not actually talking about physical paper they're talking about you're on a website and they have 10 Bitcoin, say, but because they do fractional reserve, they actually sell 100 Bitcoin. So that's, again, now there can be a run on that bank because if the 10 Bitcoin get withdrawn, there's still 90 Bitcoin outstanding and no one else can withdraw it. They're out. They're gone. So once they get to about four Bitcoin left, they close shop. And so that's the problem. They create fake Bitcoin. They wrap their money in further loans and debt. And if there's ever a run, that there's no... But this, this instance was actual physical paper and they would put the satoshis on 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 the on the on the paper so if it said 100 satoshis there was 100 satoshis on the paper you could scan your qr code and um you could take the the money off the note so obviously if you start creating notes that then suddenly I don't have qr something. codes on then it, it's, I think it's something that would definitely happen and we should watch out for it where some type of leverage because we've already seen it haven't we where um the likes of Celsius saying they'll give you six, seven, eight percent on your Bitcoin, and uh, you know humans just trying to over leverage something. So uh, in time, I think it it will be a concept that will come about. Yeah, I just you know anything like that which takes you away from the actual Bitcoin, it just worries me. We're going to end up with fractional reserves again. Yeah. Well, because you want to go towards a perfect system to stop this shit happening, stop the silly wars, stop the consumerism, um, stop the hoarding of wealth into assets, inflation, etc. And I just, you know, I just think that that would risk it. But I suppose it is a little bit off topic now because we were talking about Elizabeth Warren, one who is <laughs> corrupted. And I think I read today that she has a wealth of over two hundred million dollars on a salary of two hundred seventy-five thousand. Um, dollars a year she must be the world's greatest investor or maybe the second um to the speaker of the house nancy pelosi uh-huh. well apparently it's only about four or five years ago her net worth was like 12 million so the last five years she has rocketed up the wealth ladder it's funny how it happened over la- over a particular couple of years yeah, just probably. like um, what was um Gollum? what's her name <laughs> Um, Gollum of New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jacinda. Jacinda, Arden. yeah. Her, over the last few years, her net wealth rocketed from literally like half a million to 20, 30 million on a salary of a couple hundred grand again. Yeah, it's as if crashing the entire economy, forcing lockdowns, forcing vaccine mandates. Weirdly, the people that did that seem to have come out extremely wealthy. I'm sure it's pure coincidence. I'm sure. <laughs> I think we must have profiteering from a pandemic. It's not what they've done. I'm sure they haven't done that. <laughs> yeah, and they seem to know which trades to make. Strange. Yeah. Whilst everybody else is living in a uh, cost of crisis, living cost crisis, right? Yeah, but but, but don't worry, Warren Elizabeth Warren. What, Elizabeth Warren did not um, was not in these boys clubs, so you can trust her. Yeah. I know. And it's, she doesn't want to keep you ratcheted down to a dying currency. 
Yeah, because that, that was even a Bitcoiner saying that. They were going, oh, yeah, I know Elizabeth Warren hates Bitcoin, but respect for her because she's she's gone from, she didn't come through all the best schools. She, she struggled through. Like, I don't care, give a shit where she came from. Is she telling the truth right now? Has she been, have you, has she sold her soul and is spitting out lies? And, and she is. So maybe she was a great person 10 years ago, but she if, if she was, if she was the center 10 years ago, she'd already sold herself. You don't get to that position, especially oh, yeah. not, she's a Democrat as well. You don't get to that position of a Democrat about doing it. Oh yeah. We haven't played the clips. So I'll just do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I literally I look for that in the thing now. So I'll play that I'll play that minute and a half video. With Bitcoin, there's no thing that backs it up. And and that's what makes it different. It's just belief. You and I assess. You assess the value's gonna go down, I assess it's gonna go up, and therefore I buy. So it's no so it's more like this artwork. No, no? because at the end of the day I can hang that thing on my wall. Right. And I can enjoy it or I can it. throw darts at it. Um, you could sell it for money. Sure you can. Right. I mean, there are features about it that are the same, but it's it's not the same. And look, one of the things we have to remember about there are a lot of things that come within this crypto world. So, for example, we could be talking about instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency. Now, that's something very different. I think that's different, too. I buy that. I accept that. That's different. right, because yeah. that's a government backed mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic transfer and it can be denominated in dollars. It could be denominated in euros. It could be denominated in some new language that's made up. But that has something that backs it up. It has a government that says if at the end of the day there's a run on this stuff, everybody wants theirs out. The United States government promises there will be something to back it up. Um, and uh, that's what banks are about. There'll be somebody there to back it up. But with Bitcoin, that's not the case. So I've already played it, but um, it's just so they can, everyone can see it. It's a really good clip where I think, again, it's, it just reminds me of, I'm surprised, like this is clearly a question she's um, practiced. I think she is part of the anti-Bitcoin crowd. She seems to be the head of it in the US government. She's always the one that seems to have the, the argument against it. But well, do, you know, do you notice at the end where she starts to pivot and go, oh, but, but blockchain and digital currency isn't all bad because you could have a central bank digital currency. And then the interview was like, oh, yeah, that's different. That is totally different. I agree on that. And she's like, yeah, that could be good. Like, Who knows what it'd be called, what it could do. Mm. And it's like she, they're already trying to pivot and get us used to like demonize everything about Bitcoin, but go, but blockchain and a government-backed shitcoin? Now that's that's the good stuff. And you go, and the problem is that like people will buy this bollocks. They will. The, what do you mean? Because what, it just what could it be, be it's called? Not, doesn't it? Slave coin? Digital <laughs> food tokens? What do we want to call it? They'll probably use you know the phrase that was used previously which is like e-cash or you know just something along those lines just to legitimize it a little bit more yeah digital dollar something like that i'll we'll just call it yeah. dd just something simple yeah the e-dollar or so you know again it's it's going to be it works just like bitcoin but it doesn't it's once again just like what is the advantage of having this and i think you know going through our points to be more precise i think we have covered them is what is the advantage of having a digital currency none it just means you're locked into a system you're locked into a currency you cannot get out because they can control what you buy what you spend on they can link it to all parts of your life it is basically a surveillance state this is you know china the kind of things which everyone wants to fight against but probably going to roll over because um america say it's good and the democrats are good because they're in blue and not red um but then you kind of look at some of the points so she says um the dollar is backed by the government so we covered it it's basically well how's it backed they'll, they'll print more if there's a bank run but how can there be a bank run if it's backed by the dollar because they're not required to have many anything in their reserves and why is that? Because they just create money. They make money out of nothing. So literally, 
they could have 10% of the money actually backed up. So your money, which you've got saved away in your bank account, is not there. So that's an issue. You know, that's a whole problem with the fiat. And it kind of points you towards Bitcoin. I think, well, you could probably scream at various people and they still wouldn't accept it. They say, well, but it's Elizabeth Warren. She came from nothing. But it's just a whole load of bullshit, just to summarise that. Yeah, and whilst we've been uh, talking about that as well, I've been looking at one of my favourite websites, which is missing from the pod for a while, is the US National Debt Plot. So uh, 10 years ago, or just over 10 years ago in 2012, the national debt was around 15 billion. Sorry, yeah, 15 billion. Now it's gone up to, as we currently speak, 31 and a half billion. And uh, in five years' time, it's due to go up even more to 46. Sorry, Mr. of the US. Yeah, the US. Do you mean trillion? Sorry, trillion. Yeah, trillion. Yeah, I was going to say, wow, they must have been on um, some spending cuts. It's like they, yeah, they, they looking... spent that just on looking Biden's ice cream collection. We're looking at nine zeros, <laughs> of course. Oh, God, yeah. But once again, what's this money backed by? If you mm. can just keep on going into debt producing it, was it me? Who are you in debt to? The government yeah. can't be in debt to the government because they called two different departments something else. Uh, well, next story talks about US government as well, doesn't it? So they're getting involved in Bitcoin here. And I find it very interesting that that this story links to the Silk Road. And obviously Silk Road happened back in 2013. So, so 10 years ago now. And we know they seized tens of thousands of Bitcoin. Uh, I, I've got in my head it was about 140,000. And then but we're we're talking about fifty thousand Bitcoin here. Well, they sold ten thousand Bitcoin recently, and then they intend to sell another forty-one and a half um, Bitcoin uh, in the coming months. And I just look at this and go, this is quite convenient timing, right? So the banks are collapsing. Bitcoin goes on a bit of a a, a bit of a run, and then we we saw some sharp pullbacks, and it looked very clearly that there's there's some big whale in here dumping quite a few coins. And you go, oh, it appears to be the US government who have been holding on to coins for 10 years suddenly decide to dump 10,000. And you go, it seems, are they just trying to stop the, the bull run and stop the stop Bitcoin? Yeah, but you think they've got limited amounts. Oh, that's it's beautiful, yeah. They, they can only suppress the price of Bitcoin for so long. It's mm. just that because they got so much in Silk Road, like they will run out of ammo eventually. But it's like the um the American fuel reserve, you know, they've been releasing all that because they basically inflated the money so much and everyone number one thing which seems to moan in America is about the price of fuel. And um so they've been using their strategic fuel reserves to artificially keep the price down. But once it runs out, what do they do? They've got no fuel reserves then. And the price yeah. actually goes up to the natural amount and therefore all the American people will be exposed to the real price. Yeah, they do the same on gold. Every time the price of gold goes up, they um, like create a load of paper gold and loan it out to increase the supply and so suppress the price so the price of gold doesn't go up too much. Doesn't surprise so, me. Yeah. So the, anything that can challenge the, the dollar, so yeah, things like oil, gold, Bitcoin, it's just standard practice that they, they, they have mechanisms to suppress price. And at the moment with Bitcoin, they, they have their mechanism because they can't do any art, anything artificial bollocks. The only way to suppress the price of Bitcoin is you have to own Bitcoin, you have to sell it. So that's what they're doing. But they are going to run out of seized Bitcoin eventually. <laughs> but who knows? When they once they start running out, they can just see some more, can't they? They just yeah. some more. They just make a new and, law. And that is always a thing that I think is the elephant in the room. If it's so bad and so worthless why try to seize it you know if it if it's that if it's nothing if it doesn't mean anything why are you guys trying to get yeah, why, why hold it for 10 years yeah these are silk road coins right this is just this was just drug money bollocks yeah. magic internet money back and in they got, exactly and they got mount gox seized money as well yeah i don't think there was well that was in japan and i don't think there was barely yeah so the japan 
court seized that to give back to customers. Silk Road was seized and it was just proceeds of crime one hundred percent. So I was just thinking if there's any more kind of like, you know, lumps of Bitcoin anywhere. There are. There are some Mount Gox coins that need to be sold, yeah. So they've been seized by the Japanese government and they're going to be sold. So we reimburse customers. So yeah, can't I we, can't we just have their Bitcoin back? And that's what everyone wants. Yeah. It's um, funny because the, the, the 90% of the Bitcoin is gone, but the 10% that's left is nearly, I think, worth more than what they lost yeah. anyway. And a lot of them just want the Bitcoin back, but they can't do that. The courts in Japan don't have a mechanism for giving Bitcoin back. They have to give the Japanese currency back. So that's what they'll get. And then they can buy Bitcoin again with it if they want. But yeah. It's nowhere near the same, is it? Um, just going back to the story, so we talked around um, the government selling Bitcoin and plans to sell even more, so hence to hammer the price down. But it's actually linked to a Dean Amos tweet, and it's a great take by him. So we've touched upon this on the Elizabeth Warren story, but government sells something it can't produce for something it can make at a stroke of a pen. Have fun staying poor. So really good point here. Literally, they can print as much as they want, so why do they need to sell it? Yeah, because they want the price down. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've got something which is scarce, which is a rare asset to have. Why would you get rid of it? You'd at least, you know, being a government, bank on, you know, having, I don't know, 10,000, 100,000 coins, because you never know. Especially you got it for free off seizing it. Hey, you kept it for 10 years, and then suddenly the banking system started to collapse in Bitcoin. And as a bull run, and magically decide to sell 50,000 Bitcoin and go, fuck off. You've been saving it for this moment, haven't you? Yeah. But we're just, yeah, it's fine. Maybe we would be at another 10K higher if it wasn't for this. But they're, they're going to run out of, of dry powder eventually. And uh, the only way for them to get it, hopefully, once all this is gone, is they're going to have to fucking buy it first to dump it. And that ain't going to work because yeah. it's just going to pump us, pump us higher. So... But who knows that maybe they'll try and shut down an exchange. Maybe that's why they're going after Binance and Coinbase. Maybe they're trying to sneak some Bitcoin out the back doors of those guys. Who knows? I'm finding a load of Bitcoin for illegal securities fraud or something. It's kind of like a double-edged sword, though, isn't it? Because whilst they then print more money, or they could go to the, the extreme of printing more money to buy Bitcoin to then dump it, they're then devaluing the dollar at the same time and then obviously strengthening bitcoin because we get higher and higher at the same time so the plan is sorted from the very outset unless i'm missing something i think it's to make the um the um i think it's to make the downward spiral more dramatic it's how I see it. Like at the moment, it's just trying to stutter the price because the banks are failing, like Mr. All In said. But I think one of the ones which I'd try and do is, you know, when we go from, say, 200K down to 100K, I'll slam in some Bitcoin to make sure it goes down super fast to scare out some noobs. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, it's dead. And it's like, you know, when you become a bit hardened to it, you just be like, it happens every four years. Yeah. And this is, this is also Get why they'll be... when it's dead. <laughs> yeah. But this, I think this will be also why we talked about it last week, why all the exchanges are getting pressured by the US government. They want to get inside and see the order books and stuff. So they, they want to know that, look, we've got a certain amount of Bitcoin and it isn't, for, isn't kind of infinite. So when we sell it, we want to have the maximum detriment to Bitcoin. So open up your order book. We want to have a take a look. And then they will literally study that and they'll know based on probably dumping and pumping other stocks on the stock market going, right. So with this Bitcoin, how much we want to maximize the damage we make when we sell this. So we'll wait until the market's super weak and then dump a load, knowing it will dump the, the price really far. It's just, uh, yeah, they, they, they can't even do it. Honestly, I think they literally just want to see the order book and go show us it. Regulatory wise, you have but do to they, show us. Do they need the order book considering things on the blockchain? Yeah, well, you need, yeah, yeah, because not everything goes on the blockchain in exchanges. It's um, all the orders just go into a database. Okay. That it's only the withdrawals and the deposits that move around there. Everything else is just you, you kind of like when you're trading yeah. on Coinbase and stuff. That's essentially kind of paper Bitcoin, really. 
Oh, you mm-hmm. mean like um or oh, what's it called where you can set um if it hits this value, sell it, or if it drops below this value, sell it. Yeah, it's like all the I, I, I get you. Loss. So I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, stop losses, market orders. Yeah, stop loss. Yes, yeah, that's that's what I mean by the order book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But uh yeah, which you know, moves on to our next story, which this is by from an enemy of the podcast, which is Noriel Rubini. I don't know if you recognize this guy, but he the hates, name rings a bell. He he's been on the trading circuit um like or like the the event circuit for years, just saying Bitcoin's a scam. Da, da, da. He got famous by predicting one of the crashes, but he always predicts a crash. So it's like eventually you have to be right. And then he's then made, made a name for himself uh, saying that Bitcoin is a scam and da-da-da. But in in this article he's done on, on here, you know, he's, it's, it's just interesting to see someone that is not kind of not a Bitcoiner uh, just write an article about the banks, which is basically agreeing with what we've been saying on here for ages, which is most US banks are technically near insolvency and hundreds are already fully insolvent. And uh, so the the whole inflation crisis and the debt crisis is going to be way more severe once this gets revealed. And uh, yeah. it's just it's just what we've been saying. Right? Like the banks don't have the deposits that they have, and all all, all the only reason why they haven't collapsed yet is no one's trying to take the money out yet. Yeah, so he's written a big bit. I warn that inflation would be bad for both stocks and bonds. Higher inflation would lead to higher bond yields, which in turn hurt stocks as a discount factor for dividends rose but at the same time high yields on safe bonds would imply a fall in their price too owing to the inverse relationship between y- yields and bond prices i mean like whilst he's written it um quite articulately even i predicted this even i could see that you know mass inflation <laughs> would cause it but i was just like more kind of like We're at the bottom go, the case, <laughs> and it causes it um every bit kind of did yeah sorry yeah, every Bitcoiner did. Everyone with any ounce of sound economic um, understanding predicted it. And it's just, it's repeated, you know, what, what everyone's known. But I suppose it's someone who talks in the right language has put this together. But do you think that by him saying this, it has and creates further weight? Because there's no change, you know, it's not like the banks all of a sudden start holding deposits back. It's not like they stopped lending money out and fractional reserves uh, is stopped altogether. It just continues to happen. Mm. Oh, yeah. well, I think all this is, it's just a slight sign that obviously in, in the Bitcoin world, we've been saying for the last 13 years that the banks are insolvent, they're going to go bust. Fiat is a massive Ponzi scheme that's about to go to zero. But we've been saying that for for 14 years. And um so most people have just stopped listening to us at this point and gone, oh, you just mm. doom and gloom. You hope all this happens. It's like, no, we don't necessarily hope it happens. It's just, it's a prediction. You can literally see it. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's about to blow up and the banks don't have your money. Try and take out your, all your money. Like, if everyone did that, they're going to say no at some point. And yeah. uh, so it's just good to see this. Is like, but Elizabeth think, Warren says it's backed by the government. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, and then, yeah. And then... Uh, so yeah, so it's interesting that I think now what's happening is it's it's spreading into the more edgy side of the finance space. It's starting to agree with us, but it's the edgy finance people. Eventually, it's going to become the normal finance people are going to start agreeing with us, and then before you know it, so you're going to be this, the the risk adverse and the super safe finance people are going to start agreeing with us. And then once that's going to happen, the normies will start. They've got no one to look to really to go. Well, everyone that's talking about finance is telling me the banks are insolvent. They must be right, and then that's that kind of causes the bank run, isn't it? Because yeah, there's no, there's nothing they can do at this point. As we've discussed this before as well, where it's not like oh look, the banks don't have any money. Oh, I know, we'll just put it back. They they, they can't. They're so over leveraged. There's so much debt. There's debt on top of debt on top of debt on top of debt. They, there's no way of fixing the fiat Ponzi scheme that that is that exists today. But- but my kind of argument about this is you talk about the normies, you know, when they have the um, the core finance people saying this, where are they going to put their money? The normies, because Bitcoin is quite an alien concept. And mm. then you've also got the fact that um, 
you know, just setting up a ledger for Nomi. Yeah, they just want mm. to withdraw it. They just want the money and shove it under their mattress or something. Mm. Or That's gold. What... Get some tungsten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in the moment, I think they literally just, they're scared that Bank A has, has gone insolvent. So they just want to take the money out. They want to physically see it. They want their, their five grand, their 10 grand. And they go, I don't care if it's going to rot with inflation. I just want to physically have it, shove it under my pillow. And yeah. if, en- if enough people do that, they're going to realise there's there's no money in the bank. It's so funny we added the story to this week's agenda because I had the same conversation with my mum uh, in terms of it just simply said, the banks are insolvent. And her face was just like, what do you mean? And then I went through it in terms of, you know, if everybody wanted to take all their money out, they don't have it, but in order to give to you, it's just numbers on a screen. Uh, and it's like I just showed her fire. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, what's what's um, <laughs> Mummy Never Looks um, <laughs> Bitcoin? Well, this was... This was obviously on the road to Orange Palinka. I've not even bothered starting just yet, but um, I think it has to happen ultimately. I was going to say, let, let's be honest. Like the, the three of us, have any of us actually managed to Orange Pill a parent? Uh, not fully. What about in terms of anyone, say over the age of sixty-five? Uh, no. I just yeah. think it's a generational gap. Yeah, well, they they grew up in the boom period, didn't they? Where the the best it's it's like for us, where the best stocks that you could have invested in for our generation were the internet companies. That's where everyone made their money. Whereas yeah. for our for our parents' generation, the best stocks, the best performing stocks, is the banks. And then the next good place to have your money was in property. That all boomed. And then also, like, I, having done my parents' like pension planning and stuff, holy shit, their pensions were good too. Mm. They, they've come out rich. You know, they, they've both not been rich all their entire lives, and they've come out in their 60s, and they're rich now. Their pensions were fucking nuts back then. They're nowhere near as good now. They were full, full salary pensions. They were The contributions the companies were paying, like, it's, it's fucking nuts how good these pensions are. And um, so, of course, the system's been kind to them. Right, so yeah, you know, the banking stocks did well, the pensions have done well, and property has done well. And this, these are the safety blocks that the government has kind of gone. Look, this is why you trust us. So I think the proof is, they like, for to a certain extent, they they kind of reaped the the profit of the Ponzi scheme. They they rode the wave up. Unfortunately, it's our generation that are probably going to be through it when it plateaus and then fucking goes boom, and yeah. the house of cards comes crashing down. So. See, so, yeah, I think that's probably one of the reasons why it's just so hard to get them on board because it hasn't been as obvious as it is probably until the last decade, really, hasn't it? It's really gone, it's really shifted into overdrive. Yeah. The, the last 10 years, but maybe even specifically the, the last five, it's very clear they know there's a problem and they're really ramping up the authoritarian controls to try and keep everyone in line and manage the fact that the system's about to collapse and they need a load of different things to blame it on. And the kind of things they're blaming it on now are just so extravagant and unbelievable that I think even well, like, the male the most... pa- patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's... since the 2008 crisis, ultimately, you know, that started things in terms of the collapse, and then there's the recovery from there, and then yeah, you've got COVID and the you know the disproportionate amount of. Um, creating more money into the world as well. It's just gone exponential since then. So it's just a catalyst of things. And the thing is, it's the snowball effect is it's only going to happen quicker and quicker. So, you know, we've seen it with the banks collapsing, one bank, another bank. And so when the next one happens, which it will, there will be more quickly following behind it. Yeah. And I think also, like, I, I saw a tweet today where it, it's hard to orange pill people that already essentially fight financially free to a certain degree. You know, like, they've mm. once you hit retirement age and you've, you've either planned well or you haven't, 
And I think you've either you've come to terms with how much the state pension is going to give you or whatever your pension. So like when I look at my parents, they just see it as unnecessary risk. Like the, the amount of money they have will see them yeah. till death. And they'll still have a pot left over that they're happy just handing down. And that's all they wanted in their entire life. They want enough money to live on and still have a little chunk left where they can feel that they're they're giving their children a little a, a little something. And so they, they don't see like going, why would I put my money in into Bitcoin and essentially risk it is what they see it as doing. Yeah. You know, in, yeah on their, right. So they just go, we're just going to play it safe, you know, like that's just and obviously I I'm trying to get them as much as I can, like converting it over because I don't want the banks to collapse and then steal their money. But it's it's very, very tough. And it, it's hard. It is one of those things I find very, very tough to because obviously you never know, like especially with my parents, they've got health conditions and all sorts of things. So who knows how long they're going to be around for? It could be could be one year, it could be 20, it could be anything in the middle. So getting them to convert a substantial amount of their retirement money in, into Bitcoin is a very conflicting thing for me because I don't know what the price of Bitcoin is going to do over the next five years. It could go down another 70% from here. And that's going to really stress them out. And I don't want to be responsible for that. Yeah. And and that that might be their final five years on this planet, right? So you go, I don't want them to have seen 70% of their pension pots disappear and think that they've made a huge mistake, even though I know over the long term it would be a fantastic decision. So I'm very conflicted on that. And to a certain extent, I'm going, look, I just need to let them make their decisions. I can't push them because I just don't know what the price is going to do. And I don't want to fall out of them in the last years of their life. So, it, you know, it's kind of a, if the bank steal the money and it all goes, I'll be there to pick up the pieces. I got some Bitcoin to cover them, but they might lose the load. And I'm just kind of going, I probably, I'm, I'm too scared to to tell them to put it into Bitcoin and then them lose some in the short term and be upset about it. It's interesting as well, because I, I was thinking anybody that has got to the stage where, you know, they're okay, they're comfortable. Like you say, they're not going to take any risks, but they'll also be the same people that would never spend their entire pot. You know, there's going to be something left over. So when, um, you know, Dr. Death comes to us all, they're, it's not like they're going to be at zero in whatever pots that they have. So it's just not in your nature or their nature to get to that point where they are spending every last penny and then some with in order to be like, yeah, I'm out. I live my best life. Yeah. See, the closest one I reckon is my father-in-law. He hates the government. He hates paying taxes. <laughs> okay. And he has a general distrust in the government. And I'm kind of going, I just think to myself, do I just give him my copy of the Bitcoin standard and tell him to read the first hundred pages? Mm. It'd be an interesting one. Obviously, mm. um, the wife has not um, taken on Bitcoin at all. <laughs> just thinks yeah, I'm there, with my, there to be honest. Yeah, with my magical internet money. Yeah. And your friends who aren't your real friends, you're just talking to a computer right now every Tuesday as as you record, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got to get your missus on board. I don't even know how you can... Oh, like, the amount of rants I go on a daily basis, like, if she wasn't a Bitcoiner, <laughs> I, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't have her arguing with me all the time. Like, I'd just be like, nah, you need to get out. You're a fiat cuck, get out. Well, she blames... Um... What was it? She for mass inflation and the cost of living crisis. She blames um COVID. Yeah, which yeah, which in my mind is the government. So that's why we disagree, yeah. isn't it? She'd be like, no, no, it's a pathogen. I'd be like, no, it's not. It was the flu, which which was very well marketed by the government. I'm I said, confident um, that she'll eventually, will eventually get there, because she's questioning things like you know, COVID and having the jabs, et cetera, and realising that everything the government actually say should do the opposite. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Because it will essentially be her idea and she may as well start calling herself uh, Satoshi when she finally gets it. But for now, it's just like, nah. <laughs> I've planted a lot of seeds about it, but yeah, they're not being taken upon yet. Yeah. 
And it's, it's the number one. Every, every Bitcoiner has to be to Orange Pill their, their partner. It, that's um, You've got to start there. If you can't do that one, then you should give up trying to Orange Pill anyone else. You've got to do that one first. It'd be interesting in terms of the comments from uh, from the listeners as well. So if anybody has done so, please comment and share with us, you know, how did you do it? How long did it take? And what's it like living with a status yeah. up if that's what you live with? Because I just <laughs> believe in the state. I'm like, oh, no, I just can't do it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we're talking about the state and state, the state of probably sponsored an article here written in the New York Times. Uh, I've apparently reached my day limit of articles, but I can see. That's I, I was just about to say I've done <laughs> the same as well, actually. I don't know how that's happened. I don't read the New York Times at all, so yeah, I think I've just clipped this link a couple of times, and they've just been counting and gone, "Oh, you need to subscribe." I'm like, no, go fuck yourself. I couldn't but, even read it one time. So oh, I've right. got no idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. Read it once. But all, all it says really is it's like the the, t- the title is has Bitcoin benefited from the banking crisis, not in the way its fans hope. So the the general thing is Bitcoin's up seventy percent. They admit that, but they go, oh, but this was supposed to be Bitcoin's big moment. This is when Bitcoin went to infinity. The banks were all collapsing. Ah, oh, it's all just been a bit of a damp squib, really, isn't it? Seventy percent is nothing because it's still down from all time highs. Yet the banks have collapsed. You just go, hold on, like only a couple of banks collapsed and they all got bailed out. And as we saw earlier, chances are what stopped the ball one is the US government dumping a shit ton of Bitcoin, which is why it's only up 70%. It probably would be up 150% if that hadn't have, have happened. And yet yeah, we're at the moment, it's we're not in full meltdown of the US banking system yet. We've just seen the first couple of dominoes. So we're in like, what is it, like month one or two of the collapse? Let's see where mm. we are this time next year. Let's see how many more banks have gone under. So let's not start doing a parade and going, oh, Bitcoin hasn't done what it's supposed but to it, have done. Like, the, the, it doesn't, the, this it match doesn't is not over yet. But it doesn't matter. Government backs the banks. <laughs> oh, no, I, thought, <laughs> I thought the banks backed the government. <laughs> Both ways. They're both just leaning back on each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, if I push one of them over, I think they both put me out. But yeah, it's just a nice little FUD article just to, to laugh at. But this is what the normies are reading, right? This is this is what... I, and I remember, <laughs> I've actually... Watched... I love how we say the normies. Yeah, but it is. This is what the... Whenever Bitcoin comes across, um, like, the normie media, because they, they, they don't read Bitcoin media, they don't reading... Um, Bitcoin Twitter. They're reading these mainstream articles from the New York Times and Washington Post. You know, exactly, and the New York Times, Washington Post is going to have great weight and credibility with those yeah. guys, and therefore to them it's like, oh well, I can trust this. This is the truth. And to a certain degree, yeah, maybe, but there's more to it. And as we know, the majority of people don't really read the you know, the bulk of the actual article. So they'll grab you with the headline and that'll be it. But re- it's somewhere in there, which none of us can read because we've reached our quota, it'll probably go on to say, mm, actually, it's probably the truth, you know, it, such and such it has happened. Yeah. Well, I think they're trying to just quell the flames, aren't they? Because I think what they yeah. realise is that with this banking crisis, a lot of people are turning to Bitcoin. So they're trying to get these articles out to go, oh, you've probably been hearing about Bitcoin as a as an alternative to the banks. This is our take, just so you know. Bitcoin has pumped. It has, we'll admit that, but nowhere near as much as it should. All these Bitcoiners are still wrong. Bitcoin should be way higher now. And they're just going, fuck <laughs> off. The, the, all, all, the, all the lines are lined up on in our favor. The banks are collapsing. We said they would. When that happens, people move their bit, move money into Bitcoin. That is happening. And they're just going, yeah, but not at the rate you said it was. It's like, well, what what rate did we say? We didn't know. There's no like CEO of Bitcoin that has promised a price at this, this, and this. We just went, eventually, fear will collapse, and this clever people will liquidate their fear and switch it into Bitcoin. That is happening. So we we are right. And they're trying to say we're wrong somehow. 
So the amount of users has gone up, hasn't it? Is one of the key indicators which we've covered a, over a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think a lot of the yeah the key key um, metrics are up. Yeah, hash rate, number of users, number of wallets, number of wallets that have got more than ten dollars in it, number of transactions. Yeah, everything's on the the up and up. And what another good stat actually is the amount of Bitcoin held on exchanges at all time lows. That just Perfect. again, that's the beautiful thing about the banking crisis is that they go under, and it reminds everyone that fuck exchanges can go under. So yeah, take custody of your Bitcoin. Is there a uh, consolidated view of that, by the way, in terms of, you know, number of Bitcoin held on exchanges, number of new wallets recently opened and so forth? Because I guess that would be a good trending metric to share with the uh, listeners. Yeah, the probably is. I don't know of one off the top of my head. Yeah. Different sources yeah. for each one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking Maybe that's one for you, Dr. Evil, 10%. All well, together. I was going to say there's a website um, on that, but I just can't think what it is off the top of my head. It's got all the various charts on it. Yeah. All right. Um, the next story that we've got on the agenda is actual data. So Bitcoin is mainly powered by uh, falling water. I love this uh, when I was reading this over the weekend, actually. So this is a really interesting stat. And again, as with all the articles and the uh, the stories that we cover, just go into the show notes and you can click and see all of this for yourself. But there's a pie chart of Bitcoin energy sources. And uh, through, through gas, coal, and hydro, they are the main sources of uh, powering Bitcoin in terms of the network. But hydro, of the three main ones, is the key winner. So uh, with 23.12%, it's hydro. Coal, closely behind at 22.92%, and then gas at 21.14%. So when people tell you that Bitcoin is bad for the planet as a bad energy, you know, it's uh, it's wrong. Because we're using renewable energy in the form of water. Just under 50%, isn't it, for renewables? So you've got nuclear, yeah. coal, gas, but obviously nuclear is a very low impact energy source. Um, apart from if you believe the Greenpeace um, propaganda. When we got flared, which is probably our favourite um, success story. I'd love to see that higher, though. But I suppose too much dependency could be dangerous. But it's just pulled away, regulated, or whatever else the government could do on that one. Um, I mean, you've got forty we... percent in renewables. So if you add up wind, um, hydro, and solar, yeah, there is a whole load. On the, so... on the flip side, what's what's other FF? Oh, fossil fuels. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you got flared, other renewables, solar, wind, hydro. It's, you know, absolutely great to see all those. I guess, really, that at this moment in time, it's kind of at that cusp of not quite 50-50. It is more in favour of fossil fuels as a collective. But as time goes on, you know, I guess they will start to get to net zero and carbon neutral and so forth. And the renewable energy sources will be cheaper to uh, power the network, but yet still have the same effect in terms of the network. And so, uh, so the best one will win. Yeah, it's good to contrast, obviously, last week where... Our main story of the week was in you know, the Satoshi skull with big fossil mm -hmm. chimneys on the top of a skull pumping out dirty, you know, dirty smoke. And again, I don't even care about that. But yeah, so the, the top energy usage to mine Bitcoin now is, is hydro. And uh, mm, this is why gas follow it. But the number one is water. So 
I imagine like this is going to be so embarrassing to people that try and slate Bitcoin, right? Because you know how yeah. many banks are powered by water. You know, how how many of just about any fiat big system, so, so whatever government company you want to do, you know, education, travel, food, anything. How many of their industries can they say that twenty three percent is powered by hydro? And supposedly the dirtiest of all the new inventions over the last couple of decades of Bitcoin. Yeah, we're leading the way and no regulation had to happen on our side no no one forced us there's no esg mandate there's no bollocks it's just the market doing what the market wants to what wants to do this could be 100 coal and gas if we wanted it to be but this is what the market has decided is the most efficient way of mining bitcoin and the top one is hydro but kind of embarrassing for the naysayers <laughs> but i think yeah. this is why we've had the change in narrative from wasted energy from dirty energy over the last six months, haven't we? We've still got people pushing ahead with the the dirty energy like Greenpeace. But there have been various people saying it's just wasted energy instead. And that's kind of like, oh yeah, it could be used for, use for something um, useful like um, I don't know, making your sports direct mugs or whatever the hell else you want to make. You keep slagging them off, but by the way, I do love those mugs. They <laughs> okay, let's go for something else. And I don't know. So every, every time, every time I open my cupboard, I, I hear his voice saying, "Because <laughs> <laughs> I love those mugs too." But it's just a. It's more of an example of a consumable. You know, if we picked out something plastic, which lots of households have, then use that as your example. And it's just like, well, what would you use that waste electricity for? You know, is is a challenge. And I'm like, it'd probably be powering life support or some shit like that. You come out with the from these people. Yeah, and in reality, you'd be like, well, how many life support machines are there up on the top of this mountain? And there's not a hospital within 200 miles, so yeah. you can't get the energy to them, but you can get a miner to the energy. Mm. So in reality, the answer is, what would you do with that wasted energy? It's like it's nothing. It's release it into the atmosphere. Not... It's like the hydro dams. I think there's one in Canada, and I think Trudeau had a hissy fit because they're using it for a miner. Um, but the fact <laughs> is that it wastes so much energy. I think the um, oh, I can't remember what the terminology is. The converter needs to be within so far of the actual hydro, so the hydro actually didn't really do anything. Um, what I like about this is um, it also debunks an argument which I've heard previously before, which is if it's on a, like the Bitcoin magazine, oh, they've just spun the data to align to their agenda. But when you click through to the link to have a look at the full report, it provides the methodology as to how they come up with the actual statistics as well. So um, so it's not biased in any way. Uh, it talks about both on-grid and off-grid um, networking and mining of Bitcoin. So when it's all combined together, that's what gives and provides the, uh, the statistics that we've just obviously talked about. So it's really robust. And again, it's not just fluffed up to kind of present a positive argument in favor of Bitcoin. Yeah. Like I said, like the funny thing is about all this is most Bitcoiners don't care about yeah. the, the, the where the usage comes from. Like we're not really incentivized to make <laughs> it look like it's hydro. Where we don't give a fuck. It Miss, is what it is. Miss no show does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you targets, yeah. yeah. But like yeah, the whole world is ESG mad, and um, and it looks like like if, if any market, any industry with all that ESG bollocks targets had the type of stats that Bitcoin had, they'd be chuffed to bits. Yet we're the one that's getting slated. Yeah, and we have no yeah. ESG targets. We're just doing what we do. <laughs> well, of course, when the four Bs do our annual report, you know our ESG score will be uh, really important to us. Yeah, well, it has to no be show, get a gold star. You have to be yeah. on recycled paper. Yeah. It's a shame that they don't look at our YouTube strikes. <laughs> and that, you know, that'll bring us down. Great. Have we got a new product? Last story of the week. Yeah. You found it. Looks fun. It does look very fancy, doesn't it? Yeah. Where, where did you find this, actually? You, you stumbled across this, didn't you, somehow? 
Yes. Yeah, so um, I subscribe to the Bitcoin layer, uh, which is from Nick Batia. To okay. be honest, I really don't <laughs> read his articles. Um, again, it's just something, obviously, that he said still doesn't bode well with us. Uh, but this came up as one of the sponsors. And naturally, for those that do, then go on to click it, it looked pretty flashy. So I was just like, oh, OK, let me take a look at this. Uh, so I've gone in and, yeah, it looks really good. And so what is it know, just for everyone that's listening now? Oh yeah, sorry for everyone that's listening. Sorry, it's a uh, it's it's a it's a digital well, it's a digital um, wallet, hardware wallet, but it looks like a phone. And I can only describe to those that may be listening on streams that if you know what a virtue mobile phone used to look like back in the day. Or even maybe like a, a Nokia, like a you know an old school Nokia, but with a color screen, it looks like that, but with nice aesthetics essentially. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. So it's called the Foundation. Comes only at two hundred fifty nine dollars per one. But yeah, and I checked out. You know, didn't want to trust him. Wanted to verify them. They have been around a little bit, so they've been since. 2020 things so have been around for about three years according to their their twitter about twelve and a half thousand followers and they do seem to be pretty robustly followed by quite a lot of bitcoiners i don't know how it slipped past um me up until this point uh so, and um, there's a lot of bitcoiners and they did have a twitter spaces where they were talking about the security of, of hardware wallets and some really complex sharp 256 type of vulnerability they, they were chatting that i didn't have a fucking clue what they're talking about <laughs> so uh that sounds good i like it when my hardware guys are talking and like and i can't keep up it's like okay you're giving me confidence you guys know what you're doing mm. so they do seem like quite a legit company because uh, obviously when i first saw this i mean this looked way too slick it's just going to be a scam it's like they're either not going to be sending me anything or they are going to send me something and it's going to be freaking compromised. And any Bitcoin I put it, it's just going to get sweeped straight off and straight over yeah. to wherever it freaking came from. But um, but no, it doesn't look like that. It does actually look like a genuine hardware wallet. And, and yeah, who knows? It's I, I'm not in the market for one right now, but it it looks quite usable, right? Yeah, it looks like a, what is it? That's like a, quite an pricey, iPhone 1 or something? Yeah. I, I would also say it's Bitcoin only, right? Yeah, it is Bitcoin only. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, no is, shit coins on it. Yeah, yeah. Which is fantastic, right? Yeah, it's a bit, that's a big selling point, actually. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. It's Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we're, we're very short of Bitcoin only wallets, and this looks sexy, right? This... It, it does. It does look sexy. Um, you know, obviously, it's going to be uh, V1, but V1 looks good. It looks sexy. It it works with everybody's, you know, normal phone, whether it's Android or iOS. Um, it's appealing. It, it looks appealing to the eye. I mean, it's being uh, stocked and shipped right now for two hundred and fifty nine dollars. But I'm sure the the name escapes me right now in terms of the other hardware wallet, which we were discussing previously, was around about the same price mark as well. Yeah. Well, actually, the the, the, company, the ledger, the company name is Foundation, and then the device is called Passport. Yeah, and the um, and then the mobile app's called Envoy. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of names going on there, isn't there? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't like the branding there because like Ledger's good because the company's called Ledger and their main device is called Ledger. So yeah, I don't know why you don't need two names, guys. Just um... it's nice that you know people are trying to innovate the space, but I'm just not. I mean, it like it looks nice, but I'm just not particularly attracted to to that one. Uh, Ledger Stacks was the other one uh, that was uh, yeah, looked so like a Kindle or something, didn't it? Yeah, that's right, and that's retailing at two hundred and forty-one pounds. Yeah, uh, still yet to ship that one. Yeah, and and obviously with, with Ledger, they've got they've got scale, so usually their yeah. unit price. 
if they're still sitting at high, it means they're just raking in profit for for these smaller companies. Mm. They they need to sell the product for a higher price because they're not manufacturing hundreds of thousands of these things. There'll probably be hundreds, maybe thousands that they're making. And you know, once they start selling them in a higher quantities, then the unit prices go down. But yeah, the fact that, yeah, I forgot the fact it's Bitcoin only. I think that was what was going to just almost just support them and and buy one just to give it a test. Yeah. See how it is. And yeah, you know, whenever these Bitcoin companies come out, I do think it's important we try and support them. Uh, and because I, I want to get away from Ledger. You know, Ledger, every update I ever fucking get, whenever I plug that Ledger in, it wants to update itself. And it's just yes. random shitcoin wallets. And I, I don't use this bollocks. It's like, oh, you, you can send have- NFTs in and out of your Ledger. I don't give a fuck, Ledger. Yeah. And every time I do it, I go, if you introduce a bug that fucks me up here, I'm going to be fuming. And in reality, it's going to be my own fault because yeah. I use Ledger. I know they're updating it with lots and lots of updates that are for shit coins. So if they introduce a bug that compromises my device and I lose some Bitcoin, it's going to be my fault. So I do need to move away. I need to get to a Bitcoin only wallet. And uh, Until yeah. they bring out a Bitcoin only wallet what ledger yeah yeah if they did that then yeah that'd be good but i don't think they ever will no but i guess Cause, maybe cause that's the a trend, coins, is, yeah but i think maybe that's a trend isn't it because we know that jack dorsey is trying to bring out a hardware wallet that is bitcoin only um and this is another thing as well i guess and i think we may have touched on it in last week's uh show that when you're starting to see products being innovated in and around the space, that's a really good sign. You know, again, forget what the price is. We very rarely, if ever, talk about price, but it's these types of things that you should be focusing on in terms of, um, you know, what's going on and, and why you should continue to, to stack sets. Yeah, did you see the meme today when I had um, Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey side by side. Oh, yeah. Elon had just fucking changed the the logo of Twitter to the fucking a Doge, hadn't he? I don't know. Yeah, if what, it. Wasn't it the um the ship dog? Well, it's the originally it's the Doge dog. It's a Doge dog. And um so yeah, he changed it to that. And so it just prompted people to get a picture of Elon on, on that boat looking very, very flabby and going, this is Doge. And then Jack Dorsey, a recent picture of him coming out the water with his surfboard, looking ripped as fuck. And it's like, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, just having a quick look, I think it is actually the, um, the ship dog. Uh, he um, posted a screenshot of him chatting with some Doge guy going... Oh, no, I'm wrong. It's a Doge. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Because yeah. uh, he's posted the screenshot of him chatting with a, the founder of Doge or some or some big short coin anyway, going, you should buy Twitter and change the logo um, to a Doge. And Elon went, that'd be really funny, haha. And then he reposted that picture today. And then if you checked the Twitter app at the time, the Doge logo had replaced the blue bird. And you go, I, I, I kind of say fair play for like doing it for the memes, but it's just it's just sad that Elon isn't more of a Bitcoiner, but whatever. Well, he's he's too rich, I think. I think he just likes these nerdy things, but he's just got too much money to really care. Yeah. But yeah, there's a little fun day on Twitter anyway. People hated Elon uh, a bit more today. Yeah, and we probably should just give a mention as well right now uh, to Donald Trump. <laughs> because uh, uh, you know the the more and more things that happen with Donald Trump, the closer it makes me think he's telling the truth, and they don't want him to tell the truth about what's been happening or what could happen. And I also see it as a potential for the civil war within America, which also plays back to the Ray Dalio um, changing world order. Because a, a lot of people will get behind him, but perhaps for the wrong reasons. 
and therefore whatever he's saying um, could spark something. So as we speak right now, Donald Trump is being arrested and therefore indicted as well. Over is the he actually money. at the moment? Because they've been set up for about half a year. Today no, today. Today's oh, the day. The, the, the escalades are en route. Yeah, I've, I heard an interesting take, actually, that's, that suggested that because the financial system's collapsing and they, they need another disaster that's really close at home. So by arresting Trump on these frivolous charges, right? He he was supposed to be doing war crimes, including Russia, like huge things, right? Like really the, the war crimes and the, the worst of the worst. And in the end, he's been arrested for paying off some porn star that he banged a couple of years ago and paid him off to, to stay quiet. Well, that's what you're getting him on. Like the, that's the <laughs> big crime. Like everybody knows Donald Trump banged a load of porn stars, banged all Miss Worlds, and yeah, of course he paid him to shut up Random when he went around for president. Of course he did. <laughs> yeah. Like what? I've, and that's I've, what. But the, the theory is that they're doing it to try and cause Trump's followers to go into New York to go to Washington to protest, and then they're going to provoke them and try and create riots. And then when yeah. it all starts to kick off, go look, we need to control you. We need to take the guns off you. We need to do this. We need to do that. Because they they want almost to, to provoke a mini civil war, which again, Correct. another Jan Sick type thing. Because what follows all those things, more laws, more regulation, more money yeah. printing. So the, 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 the rumor is not only are they trying to just delegitimize his run for presidency yeah, in 2024. So if you give him a criminal record, he can't run. Um, but also double-edged sword to try and provoke some mini little civil war thing going on and uh, and obviously just blame it on that everything that goes wrong with the world then banks collapsing and all that kind of stuff go oh it's the rioters you know yeah damn trump supporters racist bigot nazis you know like they just it's another person to blame it's just weird isn't it like why why would you because if anything like by charging him now you're giving him a high profile again that like, trump had been cancelled off everything He's been gone for about two years. He's just <laughs> coming back onto social media, and now they arrest him. Like you're, if anything, this is the perfect platform to run a presidency on because yeah. this is getting Trump back in the in the media limelight. And uh, you know, because if I, he was able to run, you know, I think he'd win by a landslide. Oh, against Sleepy Joe, Jesus Christ! I reckon he could yeah. get. I think I read something like this. The um, attorney, uh, district attorney, is Alvin Bragg. It's something like his campaign was funded by some kind of like branch of Soros or something like that. In fact, there's a rumour about a trail. Obviously, I don't know how true it is because I wouldn't know how to look into it, but it's just saying that there's big links of the funding, which kind of links into your comment to so a massive conspiracy theory. But as I said to all my friends when he said something about a conspiracy theory, I said the problem with conspiracy theories is they're all running out now. Mm. They've all come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're pretty much only left with flat earth now. We're like, geez, yeah, if well, the earth ends up being flat, I'm going to lose my shit. Well, actually, we've had the fake pigeons, haven't we? Birds of government drones. Uh, anyway, I think we're done. I need to go to bed. This cold's kicking in. <clears throat> well, there we have it. That it was pod number 93 brought to you by the four Bs, Mr. Orlin, a.k.a. the Trillion Dollar Man, Dr. Evil 10%, a.k.a. the People's Champ, myself, Sir Neverlook, a.k.a. the Excellence of Execution, and once again, Mrs. No Show, as a no show. Peace. Mm-hmm.